Hey, what's up guys? This is Ragnos from DLC, here to talk about Skarner and what I think about him upon release. Probably my favorite aspect of Skarner's skill set is his passive, which decreases all his cooldowns by 1 second for every time he auto attacks a champion and half a second every time he auto attacks a minion. This is a really solid passive, I think. Nothing can change about it, nerf, buff, whatever. It's good as is, so don't touch it, right? Skarner's Q skill is called Crystal Slash. It's a small AoE damaging spell. It hits every unit around him. If it hits a unit, then he becomes charged, and next time you cast it, if he still has energy charged, he does bonus magic damage. Nothing really exciting here. The damage isn't that great. It's pretty spammable, though, if you're auto attacking in between your Q spam. Even so, I still prioritize his last, don't level it over his other skills, it's just not worth it. Skarner's W skill is Crystalline Exoskeleton, which grants him a shield as well as boosting his movement speed and attack speed for a short duration. This is a really nice skill, it gets a lot of free stats for you for pretty good mana costs and short cooldown. By the time it's fully ranked, you'll be able to spam it almost constantly because it cools down by the time the effect ends. So it's really nice. Skarner's E skill is Fracture, which is a straight line damaging shot. It does flat damage no matter how many minions, champions it passes through. It doesn't fall off like some people's skills, Caitlyn's Q, that type of stuff. In addition, once an enemy is hit, they have this little glowing effect on them, and if Skarner auto attacks or deals any other damage to them, he heals for a flat amount that decreases every time he consumes one of the glowing charges. The amount of heal he gains early on isn't that great, unless you level an early point in Q, that way you can get the maximum heal out of your EQ combo early on. But later game, you'll be healing for a bunch, just E a minion wave, walk up, Q them, you'll heal for like 300, so it's a really nice skill. This is pretty much his only form of harass early on, as you can tell, I try to blast hit minions as well as harass the enemy champion at the same time to maximize its efficiency. Skarner's ultimate is called Impale, which uh, basically you just click an enemy champ, it, you attach yourself to them, drag them around for, I think it's a second and a half or something like this that. The skill sadly isn't as original as a lot of people thought it would be, I think. It's basically a combination between like a taunt and singe flip. The mechanics work the same way. You walk up, impale someone, walk them back towards your team, have them get destroyed. So the only benefit is it lasts a little longer, but the damage isn't that great, so I think it definitely needs buffed one way or the other, either longer duration or more damage, to be worthy of being called an ultimate instead of just a normal skill. If you chose to skip ahead, this is where you'll be joining us now. With the release of Skarner, Riot was promising a new, like, tanky DPS ch champion capable of a lot of high mobility, slowing, just sort of being a pain in the ass during team fights, that type of stuff. Which I think Skarner is capable of fulfilling, though not as well as Riot promised. I mean, you could sort of tell in the Riot Champion spotlight that something was a little off since they were building a Triforce, a Rylize, and a Hextech on him, which are all slowing items, which is pretty much where all his chasing capabilities come from. So, his actual skills, he's limited to his W, which is a little speed boost and his Q which has a slowing aspect, but otherwise he's very item reliant to chase. When I play Skarner, I first rush a Tear of the Goddess because he does need to be able to spam his spills to keep up his damage output, as well as chase, escape, that type of stuff, so get that first, build it into a man immune, give him some nice AD as well as increasing his mana pool. I then move into a Hextech Gunblade because it has both AD and AP aspects and Skarner scales off both, although more in favor of AP actually, which I was kind of surprised at since he was casted as a AD champion, so I thought that was rather strange. Like I said, uh, Skarner is very item dependent, which means he has to farm up really well. Thankfully, he does have a lot of good farming skills between his E and then combined with his Q and his auto attacks, he is able to farm up all the items he needs, thank god. However, he is pretty much limited to farming early game because he has no significant harassing damage to be a threat to enemy champions early game. Another downside to him is considering he is meant to be an AD champion, his base attack damage and attack speed are both horrible and they don't scale that well either in the later game. Not all of Skarner is bad though, I mean obviously his ult is hilarious. A lot of good initiation that you can do with it as well as shutting down the enemy carry. A lot of fun stuff. 
really funny to watch also when combined with other movement spells such as like a Janna ult or like a, a Alistar headbutt and stuff where you're taking yourself and the enemy that you ulted and you're all just bouncing around all over the place. It's pretty funny sometimes. Another aspect I like about Skarner is his low cooldowns. You don't have to have any cooldown items and he's still really spammable which helps charge your tier of the goddess really quickly. He also has good healing abilities, his E combined with his Q heals him for a lot, especially once you get a Hextech. It's easy to regen a lot of health after a big team fight or something. Gives him good durability, able to stay out longer lane, that way he doesn't have to pour back as often, which is nice. All in all, I feel Skarner is an okay champ, uh, definitely not worth 6300, that's a bunch of crap, maybe 3150. Especially, I'm anticipating some buffs coming his way next patch because he is pretty underpowered right now in my opinion like i said a lot of his scaling is not that great so hopefully riot will change this to make him more worthwhile but until then i would not recommend buying him for 6300 it's simply not worth it and that concludes this episode of first impressions i'm ragnus mysterios peace out